So one of the advantages for getting a streamer is that you can remove the computer from your system. We get a streamer for convenience and speed. Now speed in a sense, you don't need to boot up a computer every time you want to listen to music. Instead, you have instant access to all your music from your tablet or your phone. Now some would also argue you get a streamer for sound quality improvement because you remove the noisy computer from your system. Now, from the emails and the comments I get, I do see there is a strong interest in streamers, and that is why I've been trying to review as many streamers as I can get. So far, I've reviewed the Blue Sound Note 2i, the Matrix Element i, and the Mini Pro 3. Today, I'm adding the $750 USD Volumio Primo to my list of streamers that I believe is worth your time. Hey, why is it pronounced Volumio? Would it not be Volumio? So why choose the Primo and not the other three streamers? This has to do with the fact that the Primo can do certain things that the other streamers cannot. And today we are going to talk about it. Volumio, the Italian company, has been making network software player for audio companies and audio files for a while. Now, the Primo is their current network streamer, and let me put up here the specs on screen. Now, the Primo uses an Asus Tinkerboard S well, instead of a Raspberry Pi. It has a 4K HDMI output, which you can connect to a monitor. It has an ESS9038 DAC chip that supports up to DSD128 and 32-bit slash 768K via USB. To access the Primo, you use either the Volumio app or a web browser. So let's start with how it sounds. The Matrix, SMSL topping DACs that I've reviewed in the past are around the same price. So naturally, I'll compare them to the Primo. The Primo is not as neutral as some of the Chinese stacks I own. And as you know, I personally don't like neutral sounding gear. And that is one of the reasons I like the Primo. If I compare to the more expensive Un S8, for example, the Un S8 is more edgy, sharper, faster, more transparent, but I enjoy the smoother Primo just as much, if not more with certain speakers. I would say this. If you're looking for a sharp, neutral, analytical, resolving DAC, then the Primo might not be for you. If you're looking for a DAC that is voiced to sound more like quote-unquote analog, then yeah, take a look at the Primo. Now, to keep expectations in check, okay, I'm not saying it has the same level of analog feeling as a $4,000 DAC. However, I do find it pleasing. Now, the rest of the things like soundstage, timing, instrument separation, and so forth, it performs great, but within its price bracket. Now, I've lent this unit to Russ, and uh, he told me in terms of sound quality, now just to give you a reference, it is better than the Blue Sound Note 2i. Next, let's talk about what you should be aware of if you are buying this unit. First, you need to buy the 750 Hi-Fi Edition version to have all the functionality enabled. You can decide to go with the $580 Community Edition, but just double check the differences before you commit. For example, I remember like to enable Blue, Bluetooth on the unit, you need to have the Hi-Fi Edition. Second, the software has a steeper learning curve when compared to the Blue Sound Note 2i, for example and it does have a few bugs. Although the software is overall simple, navigation, certain features, and customization requires you to spend a bit of time to get comfortable. Now, I do wish the flow was better, and I would suggest you to download the software, it's free, and try it first. Third, there is no remote, no buttons, no LED on it. It can be inconvenient at times, now that we have all the negative out of the way, let's talk about why you should consider this unit and what it can do that the other streamers cannot. First, 
you can install plugins. So let me put up here on screen. For example, if you want to use Spotify Connect, you can install the plugin for it. You want to stream music from Rune, you can install the Rune Bridge plugin. Now, there are many plugins, and uh, I saw some interesting plugins such as uh, Mini DLA. Does it mean that uh, this can make the Primo into a Mini DLNA server? I did not try, but the point is no other streamers I have tried in the past can do this. For those of you who want to buy the $580 version and don't need all the functionalities, perhaps installing the plugin Squeeze Like Player and Logitech Media Server plugin is enough to meet all your requirements. The point is, it is flexible. Second, you can upsample to 768K with this Primo. The only streamer I've tried that can do the same was the Lumen T2, and that streamer is over $6,000. For those of you who don't know, most of the music we listen to are 44K. So even if your DAC says it supports 768K, for example, most of the time, the music you listen to is playing at 44K. Now, I've made a video on it already, so go check it out if you want more info. I will link it in the first comment. Now, with the Primo, you can upsample to 192, 352, 768, and so forth. Remember, I said there's a certain smoothness to this streamer. Well, for those of you who like sharpness and want more detail, you can try 32-bit, 768K, and it will sharpen things up. Once again, it's flexible. Third, it has four USB port. You can plug a USB thumb drive with all your CD rips on it. You can connect a keyboard, a mouse, smart remote, USB CD-ROM to it. And you know, I remember seeing CD ripping mentioned on their website. So I guess that is one reason you want to plug a USB CD-ROM to it. Now, for those of you who need a remote, perhaps smart remote is the solution. And I'm going to repeat again. Once again, you have a lot of flexibility. Finally, you can plug a DAC to it by USB. Now, imagine you have a very good DAC and you want to just add streamer functionality to it. Well, you can use the Primo for this. Now, some of you might ask, well, um, I can do the same with the Blue Sound Note 2 I using Optical or Coaxial. Well, some DACs, like the Matrix Mini Pro 3, for example, you must use USB for MQA. Now, in this scenario, if you plug the Matrix Mini Pro 3 to the Note 2i via optical, you will not get MQA. Now, of course, you don't plug a Matrix Mini Pro that costs the same as the Primo to a Primo, but if you have a high-end DAC and you need USB to get MQA, for example, you would choose the Primo. Or, if you know your DAC sounds better with USB connection, well, once again, you would choose the Primo as an add-on streamer. Finally, it supports UPnP. Now, not all streamers do. Because it supports UPnP, I was able to see the Primo with Bubble UPnP software on my phone. And I was also able to stream to it from JRiver from my computer. So, let's wrap it up at this point. Now, once set up, anyone can use it with ease. Ideally, you would have someone who is comfortable navigating software to help you out if you're not. Now, I guess the big takeaway is once you're comfortable with the software, it's a lot more flexible. It's a bit like, I guess, driving a manual car. Not as easy as an automatic, but once you've mastered driving a manual car, you can do more with your car. For me, it is actually the sound that caught my attention. As I mentioned, it might not have the resolution or transparency of the other DACs I own, but I like the softness from it and I enjoy listening to music with it. Remember, as I always said, it's all a question of taste. Now, with that said, if you enjoyed the video, click on the like button so I can get my 500,000 views. And I will see you next time.